Now more than ever, people from around the world are becoming aware of the legitimate mysteries and unanswered questions related to our lost ancient past, as there are certain ancient anomalies that are still totally unexplainable or make no sense even in the year 2022. You see, it's examples such as the unbelievably massive 100 plus ton megalithic blocks that make up the stone walls of Sacsayhuaman, Peru, a perplexing construction of thousands of perfected polygonal shaped stone appearing as if they were created and fit together with laser-like precision. And make no mistake, this is indeed a true mystery as no one can fully explain, much less demonstrate, how the known tooling possessed by the ancients of South America could have cut, carved, moved, lifted, and constructed these walls to completion. But when it comes to legitimate ancient mysteries, we should also look at some of the ancient sites that not only make no sense, but that so few people are even aware of. For example, the ancient Inca site of Ollante Tambo, located in the Peruvian Andes, is certainly recognizable by people from all over the world, with its notably impressive terraces that have been geoengineered into the side of this stunning mountainous landscape. However, it's the lesser known details of this site that is a complete and total mystery, particularly what sits at the top of it. What you're seeing here are six 50-ton megalithic granite blocks that make up the wall of the so-called Temple of the Sun. These stones are more than 11 feet tall and are fitted together with unbelievable precision. And all around this area, you'll find numerous random blocks that are simply gigantic and range from 30 to 40 tons apiece. Clearly the remnants of whatever once existed at this site prior to its obvious destruction, which I'll discuss later in the video, but between the unique shape and design of these stones, it's apparent that what we're seeing today is significantly different from its original form to the point that what's remaining is all but unrecognizable as it has been repeatedly recycled, built upon, and restored by those who came after. However, these random and exceptionally heavy stone blocks are not even the largest that exist at this already impressive ancient site. What you're seeing here is an approximately 80 ton granite block, so large that it's difficult to capture a full photo of it as it's been blocked by another massive stone and the area directly in front of it is roped off and the guides who work at this site strictly prohibit anyone from crossing the barrier. However, you can get an idea for its incredible length when viewing it from behind, as you can see here. And I took most of these photos myself while visiting Peru last August. But I did find this photo on Google, which shows a bit more of it, and thankfully compared to people. I do not know the specific dimensions of this stone, but I estimated that it is perhaps 20 to 30 feet in length, or 6 to 9 meters. And again, one solid piece of stone. Make no mistake, this thing is an absolute behemoth. And that brings us to the awkward fact that this is indeed an unexplainable ancient relic. Because the unanswered question is, how did the ancients get stones of this magnitude to the top of a mountain? And it gets crazy once you learn where these granite blocks actually came from. Now, this is me standing to the left of those six blocks that make up the so-called Sun Temple as I showed you a moment ago. And you see that rocky peak there? That is the location of the quarry to which these stones came from. And the picture does not do the size of this mountain justice, as that peak is a mile higher in elevation from where I'm standing. And get this, it is nearly two and a quarter miles ground distance away. In other words, these 30, 40, 50, and 80 ton stone blocks were brought nearly one mile down a steep mountain and then immediately carried across a river. That's right, where you see that line of trees down at the base of the mountain is a river from which these massive stones were somehow carried across and then transported through the valley to where they were then somehow carried a few hundred feet up a steep hill to where they now lay. So here's another question. How many of you are hearing about these significant details for the first time? Because although we could probably conclude that these stones would have been likely pushed and then tumbled down to the bottom of the mountain from the quarry, I'm still not so sure that would be the method, as it seems to me that stones or boulders of this size would likely fracture and break apart in a fall like that. Who knows? But let's be real. To even push just one stone block of this size off of a cliff would be no easy feat. But that aside, for me, the big question is how did they carry 50 and 80 ton stones across a river and then hundreds of feet up a steep hill? 
To truly appreciate the type of weight that we're discussing here, we have to put it all into perspective. 80 tons is equivalent to 160,000 pounds or 72,500 kilograms. In other words, that one 80-ton stone is closer to double the weight of the most common airliner in the world, the Boeing 737, which I'm sure all of us, or most all of us, recognize. But let's compare it to a tank. The latest update to the M1A2 Abrams is now even heavier and weighs in at 73 tons. This thing squashes nearly everything it runs over into a pancake, and by the way, it's worth mentioning that this picture is of when it was only 60 tons, so three quarters of the weight of that one 80-ton stone. But let's make a more practical comparison. One of the top five most popular cars on Earth is the Toyota Camry, which is an average size family sedan and weighs approximately 3,500 pounds or one and three quarter tons. In other words, that one 80-ton stone is equivalent to more than 45 of those cars. And yet, that one stone's total surface area is only a few times larger than one of those cars. Think about that. It paints us a picture for just how mind-bogglingly dense and heavy granite actually is. It's almost unimaginable for our brains to genuinely comprehend it. So, with all of that in mind, the next big question becomes, why would they go to such extreme extent to choose a very specific type of granite that is found all the way over at that quarry? Instead of using the existing stone that makes up the mountain of Ollante Tambo, and, and by the way, you'll notice that the same volcanic stone that makes up this mountain was already used for various stone blocks around this site. So why would they choose to go to such extreme extent for this particular structure? Because I have to say that I am not at all convinced that they did so for the purpose of having some aesthetically pleasing change of color for this alleged temple. But if all of that wasn't interesting enough, wait until you hear this. The accepted theorized explanation for how the ancients would have moved these massive stones was said to be with the use of ropes, pulleys, and also by rolling the stones over tree logs to get them from point A to point B. For example, it's been suggested that the eucalyptus tree would have been used to do that, as it is abundant in Peru, and these trees grow tall and straight, reaching heights of 180 feet and remarkably fast. In fact, they can grow to 100 feet in just 10 years alone. But here's the issue with that. The eucalyptus tree is not native of South America and was brought from Australia in the mid and latter part of the 1800s. Most people are not aware of this. And it actually wasn't even until the 1970s that the Peruvian government orchestrated the widespread creation of eucalyptus forests to help their citizens have access to firewood and for creating infrastructure. So no, the eucalyptus tree was not utilized by the ancients to move stone blocks as some have suggested. And this is a significant detail when you consider that the largest native tree of Peru, of course excluding the trees found in the Amazon rainforest which borders Peru on the other side of the Andes Mountains, but the largest tree native in this area is a Quenuana, I'm definitely mispronouncing that, uh, so forgive me, but here's the thing. This tree does not grow any higher than 4 meters, or 13 feet, but not only that, its trunks never grow straight, as you can see for yourself. This is a relatively small tree, and the very nature of the shape that it grows could not have at all been conducive for rolling massive stone blocks, or for rolling anything else for that matter. You see, this is what I'm talking about. It's not until you investigate the more nuanced details that you can fully appreciate just how much of a mystery we're dealing with here. And something else that's very interesting to mention is that there are clearly multiple types of stonework at this site, at least three in fact. Yet academics claim that this was all done by the same people and at the same time, and they suggest that the ancients must have simply changed their construction patterns as they grew tired of working with the larger stones, and so they transitioned to smaller. Yeah. I'm sorry, but that's clearly not the case, at least in my opinion. Like I always say, look and think for yourself. And keep in mind that they also claim that this structure wasn't destroyed either, but rather just wasn't completed. Um, okay, well that's not what I saw when I was there, especially when you consider the site as a whole, as there are numerous massive stones that were found at the base, having been clearly fallen from far above likely related to some powerful earthquake, which of course are common in the Peruvian Andes. I mean, 
Just look, clearly something devastating happened here. Even some of the larger or more impressive stones were clearly broken apart, and it's odd that they're so randomly placed. And again, you also have to imagine these giant stones without the crude smaller ones that were obviously filled in later. And also observe just how bizarrely shaped and designed the larger granite stones are. Clearly purposeful. The unique cuts within them were obviously designed with intention and had some type of function. Perhaps support for other structures that would have been built uh, around them or you know, remnants that have long since gone. And some will even suggest that this was for you know, carrying them, but why is it that so many of the other stones don't have any of those features at all? Ultimately, I want to see a modern demonstration of a large stone block being moved up a steep hill with the use of the alleged primitive methods that the ancients were said to have used. But let me first share something interesting that goes along with that, which is that this was allegedly demonstrated hundreds of years ago, but with completely disastrous results. In Graham Hancock's book, Fingerprints of the Gods, he cites a 500-year-old example that was written about by Garcilaso de la Vega in his book titled The Royal Commentaries of the Incas, where he describes how people long ago attempted to carry one massive stone uphill in order to restore the massive blocks of Sacsayhuaman. To do this, they utilized 20,000 men to move this one stone several miles uphill, only for it to end in disaster when they lost control of it and it tumbled down and killed some 3,000 men. Unreal. Now, this is of course anecdotal, but I don't really see any reason to doubt it. Perhaps some of the figures of how many men attempted it or were killed may be exaggerated or inaccurate, but it seems to me that something catastrophic did take place for De La Vega to document it in his book. Again, this is why it is so important for our modern suggested or alleged primitive theories should be tested and demonstrated. It's easy to just develop theories on what type of manpower would be necessary to accomplish these awesome feats, but it's another to actually do it. So my response to anyone who will hear this video and still adamantly claim that the ancients of South America simply used ropes to tug these 80 ton stones up mountains and transport them over logs and over rivers, you really need to share a video demonstration proving that these methods are actually feasible. All of that said, this still doesn't take into account other profoundly unexplainable ancient sites from around the world, whether it be Baalbek and Lebanon, certain sites in ancient Egypt, or even the 125-ton stone at Sacsayhuaman, which I shared earlier in this video. Definitely leave a comment and share your thoughts on all of this and how you think the ancients could have done it, and what your thoughts are on the so-called Temple of the Sun at the top of Ollante Tambo. But all that said, I'll close it up here. My name is Jimmy Corsetti. My channel is called Bright Insight. Hit the like button and subscribe. And again, leave a comment, share your thoughts on all of this. And I have another fascinating video to come real soon. Thanks for watching. Take care, everyone.